Both the Galactic Empire and the Confederacy of Independent Systems adopted swarm-based strategies in starfighter combat, but where the Empire trained and deployed thousands of pilots in expendable TIE fighters, the CIS made use of Vulture Droids, a pilotless spacecraft controlled by an integrated droid brain. The Vulture Droid had largely disappeared from use by the time the first TIE fighters were constructed at Sinar Systems, and as a result, the two fighter craft were rarely involved in the same battle, leaving an extensive technical comparison as the only means of determining the superior starfighter. The Vulture Droid employs a unique and unusual propulsion system based around the use of solid fuel slugs. These pellets of fuel are propelled at high speed into two chambers fixed to vectoring drive nozzles on either side of the fighter's aft. Upon reaching these chambers, the pellets ignite and provide 35 minutes of thrust before it becomes necessary for the ship to return to its carrier for resupply. Though this system limits the time a Vulture Droid can remain in combat, it does provide an incredible degree of speed and manoeuvre ability, enhanced even further by the unmanned fighter's lack of reliance on inertial dampeners when performing complex manoeuvres. The eponymous twin ion engines of the Imperial TIE Fighter are considered to be some of the most precisely engineered and remarkable Starship components in history. The drives lack any moving parts and require only the most rudimentary maintenance to be kept in peak condition, a valuable attribute given the virtually endless supply of TIE Fighters in service to the Imperial Navy. In battle, the primary ion engines provide provide high-speed acceleration, and during close quarters combat, the fighter's two ion manoeuvring jets are able to sharply lever the vessel to port or starboard, affording the ship a rapid turn rate and a great deal of agility. Though both fighters are extremely agile in combat, the Vulture Droid holds a slight edge in this arena, where the first TIE fighters to be constructed were rated at 96 DPF for manoeuvrability. The Vulture Droid was rated slightly higher at 100 DPF, and this advantage can be attributed to the Droid fighter's lack of life support and inertial dampening components, improving its thrust to weight ratio and navigational precision. A standard Confederate Vulture droid is armed with four wing-mounted medium blaster cannons, as well as a pair of lower yield blasters fixed to the droid's head module. The central cannons are designed for use in the Vulture's planet-side walk mode and lack the firepower of conventional Starfighter weapons, but when used to supplement the ship's wing-mounted cannons, they can provide a slight increase to the fighter's combat potency. Vulture droids also carry warhead launchers, capable of loading either a pair of energy torpedoes or a cluster of six missiles fitted with either concussion or discord warheads, and though the fighter lacks deflector shields, it does carry a layer of alclad alloy plating which allows the ship to endure some glancing hits. The standard TIE fighter is armed with a pair of chin-mounted LS-1 laser cannons, which each wield a surprising amount of firepower in spite of their small size. The cannons have a relatively low rate of fire, but their accuracy is impressive, and a well-placed shot can disable or destroy an unshielded fighter or light transport in short order. TIE fighters are unshielded and do not carry warhead launchers as standard, but they do feature a small amount of light titanium armour to provide some small measure of protection from enemy fire. Perhaps the greatest weakness of the TIE fighter is the pair of large quadanium solar panels that make up much of the ship's frame. While the panels undoubtedly represent one of the fighter's most useful features, they also limit pilot visibility as well as greatly increasing the ship's silhouette on the port and starboard side, making the TIE fighter a much easier target as it attempts to manoeuvre. In a technical comparison, it is clear that the Vulture Droid carries a superior loadout to the TIE Fighter. Its greater number of cannons help to offset the clumsy targeting inherent in droid fighters by creating a wall of weapons fire that is difficult to evade, and the fighter's arsenal of missile weapons provide a crucial edge that the TIE Fighter sorely lacks. It should be pointed out, however, that the two laser cannons carried aboard the TIE Fighter are far newer and more powerful than any one of the Vulture Droid's blaster weapons, and should a pilot be able to land a direct hit on the droid ship, the TIE Fighter's weapons would burn through its alclad armour plating with little difficulty. The Vulture Droid is capable of reconfiguring itself into a so-called walk mode, which allows the fighter to fill the role of a light tank or infantry fighting vehicle on a planet's surface. This configuration is also used to magnetically clamp Vulture Droids to the surface of Confederate warships, allowing the CIS to deploy wings of fighters from vessels that lack conventional launch bays or flight decks. 
The Discord missiles carried by many vultures are used as a delivery system for buzz droids, with each warhead containing up to seven of the droids for targeted deployment. Buzz droids are viciously effective against hostile strike craft, tearing through armour plating with bladed saws and fusion torches, and breaching the canopies of targeted ships to vent their pilots into space. TIE Fighters carry a surprisingly large array of sophisticated avionics and sensor suites given their small frame, and this provides the pilot with a great deal of detailed information about the space around his or her vessel. TIE Fighters are more difficult to pilot than most strike craft, and as a result, the Imperial training program for the fighters is time-consuming and difficult. While this does extend the time needed to bring a single fighter into combat service, the problem is mitigated by the sheer number of fighters and pilot candidates available to the Empire at any given time, and the complexity of the training program ensures that only the most skilled candidates are allowed to become pilots in the Imperial Navy. At missile range in an area free of obstacles, the TIE fighter has practically no chance of survival against the vulture droid. While the fighter is indeed fiercely manoeuvrable, no ship large enough to carry a pilot can ever turn faster than a lightweight missile, and any one of the various warheads available to the vulture droid could obliterate a standard TIE fighter in short order. At close range, however, the two ships are extremely well matched, and the TIE fighter possesses a crucial advantage in the form of its biological pilot. The vulture droid carries carries a larger arsenal of blaster cannons and slightly superior armour, but its droid brain cannot hope to challenge a trained Imperial pilot for precision and accuracy. It lacks the ability to perform creatively or to develop tactics on the fly, and when confronted with complex and unstructured manoeuvres, the fighter will most often lose control of the situation and be quickly destroyed. In conclusion, a simple dogfight between a single Vulture droid and a single TIE fighter would most often lead to a victory for the Vulture droid. While the TIE fighter's biological pilot provides an enormous advantage, the Vulture's missiles are a threat that it simply cannot escape, and the droid fighter's superior armour and weapons loadout only serve to improve its chances. It should be noted, however, that the Sinar TIE Fighter is by far the better choice as the mainstay starfighter of a galaxy-spanning empire. Its range and adaptability is far greater than that of the Vulture. Its pilot is capable of carrying out far more complex orders than any unmanned craft, and its production time and resource cost is far lower than that of the Vulture Droid.